Yes, yeah, so Eric. Um, we talked about success and you gave some very interesting, some very deep details. You really broke it down and made it clear what it is all about. But what about happiness? What's your definition of happiness? What's needed to be happy? Well, I, I will say this. I think the different the, the success and happiness, they're completely separate. Professional success, I don't feel like it's ever provided me happiness. It's given me satisfaction and resolve, but happiness for me is based upon the relationships with the people in my life. The strength of my relationship with my wife the strength of the relationships with my children, building those relationships in me. When I feel like they grow and they strengthen, that, that's, that's the happiness for me. That's when I can seek the, the happiness. Now, hopefully, I live a life where in general, I'm just pretty happy. I feel like um, that, that I feel pretty happy in general happy, but there are ways to grow that happiness. And for me, it's growing the relationships with the important people in my life. Friends, uh, individuals in my church, obviously my family, my wife being the most important individual in my life. So anytime we grow and we gather strength, that, that's a growth in happiness. That's a general increase in the strength of the foundation of my happiness. And I will tell you, the time that I've spent in combat, eight deployments over a 10-year period, it's provided such, it's given me such stress that I have to fight through that to make sure that I have the ability to strengthen those relationships with the individuals in my life. So I feel like I'm a good communicator and I'm a good listener. I better be a good listener <laughs> as an interrogator. Yeah. I think I ask interesting questions. I better be because I'm an interrogator. Mm -hmm. But I also realize that war has collateral damage on everybody. And it is, I, I feel like I can't relax many times. Sometimes I feel like my only true peace, I felt like this about 10 years ago, my only true peace was at war. But my relationship with Christ, the strengthening of my relationship with my family is, is really where I find happiness. But do you think uh, we need to have a certain attitude or a certain, is that some characteristic you're supposed to have to be open to the happiness or to really enjoy it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think you, you can have it. What I try to do is take a little bit of time in the morning to relax and tell myself, everybody, Every human being can have a kind heart. And I need to try to look at them in a kind manner. Because otherwise, you, you could start taking on the perception that that person's in competition with me. Um, if it's a business acquisition, uh, this person and I, we shouldn't trust one another. But if you can kind of just relax. And, and again, that comes from me, that comes from trying to, to pop this bubble of stress, which I feel is always building in me due to the stress of all of my combat tours. So for me, individually, it's finding the way to pop that tension, that stress, and being able to step back and go, you know what? Maybe I don't know this individual, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to be kind to them, and I probably am going to get that in return. And if I don't, it's because they're struggling with their own internal problems. They don't have issues with me. They don't. They have their own internal problems, and they're having to take that frustration out on me. 
So before I want to hate them or be angry at them, maybe I should first have empathy for them and probably realize that they're going through some struggles right now that are deeper than anything that has to do with their feelings towards me. I'm, what level I can do that on a daily basis, it all depends. But I feel like the more that I, I start with that attitude, the more that I'm rewarded with you know, kind and friendliness. And I, I was talking to my wife the other day. It, it was some television show was talking about hate and, and hating people. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I can honestly say inside my heart, I don't hate a single person. I, I don't hate anyone. And it's one of the things that I've learned from being an interrogator, having interrogated prisoners from 25 different countries. There is no Darth Vader, and there is no Luke Skywalker. There's no true evil, evil person. Now, there are people that have turned evil towards me, my country, capitalism, Christianity, but something soured them, and they actually have goodness inside of them, and there's no Luke Skywalker. There's no group of individuals or people that are right in their every cause. That that's the right team to be on. Whether it's you know a Muslim group that thinks that they're doing the right thing, or if it's an American uh, group of politicians that are say claiming they're fighting for peace and justice. No one's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has made some serious, serious mistakes, but at the same time, nobody's just plain evil. <laughs> and we're going uh, slowly but surely toward the end of our interview, but we have uh, some more, some few questions again to ask you. Uh, another question is, um, ah, what's the question? It's okay. Mm, oh, who's the question I had in my head? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Another question is, what advice would you give uh, 20 years or 15 years or maybe 25 years younger self? Are you calling me old? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you great, so you call me an old man. <laughs> um, I give advice to young children quite a bit. Um, it's a benefit of being the guy that tracked down Saddam, yes. the interrogator that's done more interrogations than anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. It's the benefits. People come and, and seek my advice, so I often give it to children. So the first thing I would say is I want to give advice to people my age. We all have experiences that we've grown from in life, and children need to hear it. So if you don't provide that guidance, you need to, because they need it. And I wish I had more guidance uh, from outside, people outside of my family and professional careers that I did not receive when I was a kid. I didn't even know to go seek it. So now, what advice would I give a teenager, an individual in their young 20s, somebody who's trying to just come into adulthood, whether it's professionally, Person. First of all, I would tell them your, your frustrations and your struggles in life can often make you turn towards taking those out on other individuals, whether it's being rude, um, bullying, um, just aloof. This is a smaller world than you think, and you're going to see those individuals again. So the things I regret my youth or the things that I felt that I did that were rude or selfish to another individual. And it's not just because of what I did to them. It's because I remember it today. And if I run across them and maybe try to apologize, usually most of them will say, I don't remember that happening. But it scarred me. And it's really difficult for me to get that So not only do you hurt them when you're young, those scars will take 
onto you for a long time. So that's the first thing I would say. My second piece of advice, try as a young adult. You, you don't have to know who you are, but try to not just be someone else if it's not who you are, if you're really uncomfortable with it. And I will give you an example. If I want to join the Army, and I want to be a Ranger, Airborne Ranger. Who were infantry, and I was. I, the first three years, I joined. I was a paratrooper, I had my ranger tab, I was a jump master, and I had all these things. I'm so proud of those three years. I freaking hated it. I was awful. <laughs> like there was no part of it that I liked. It wasn't who I was. And I don't know how, but somehow I'm blessed to get into to the field of interrogations and intelligence, and that's what I am. I'm an intel nerd. That's way more. That, that shoved me into my comfort zone, and that was a lucky thing for me to be. But I thought I wanted to be this Rambo type of soldier. And I did it for three years, but it was never who I was. So my advice to you is try to figure out who you are, what the fiber of you is, what, what your fiber is, and that way you're going to more quickly figure out what you were meant to do in life. The quicker you can stop trying to pretend that you want to be this person, we can learn from great people, but you are who you are. And the quicker you can figure that out, the quicker you get the life and the direction that was meant for you. And, and that really, really builds your foundation of happiness and, and just being a content person. Very good. Oh, that's a Okay. You share how your experience with us. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. We learn a lot from it. And I'm pretty sure those who are watching right now are just blown away by all the, all the wisdom you just share with them. But what would you like? How would you like to be a member? It's a in 100 years from now, when maybe car will be flying all over the, all over the, the space, how would you like to be in By my friends and family, I want to be remembered as somebody who they know loved them and that needed them to get through life. For those individuals who are only going to know me from my professional accomplishments, the interrogator who tried out and I'm the interrogator did 2,700 interrogations, I would love to be known as the intelligence officer who changed the way wars are fought based upon the use, the use of gathering actionable actionable, accurate information as fast as possible. As I've said, fighting wars, to win a war, means to end the war. And the way wars are ended is to, for both sides to, comp to build a situation they both can live with beyond the war. And that takes information and intelligence as fast as possible because the longer it goes on, the more damage, the more hatred is built up. So you got to get this information fast. You've got to turn it to end the wars. And I know it works. I know this is the way to end the wars. And that's the only thing you do to win wars. In the absence of wars, that's a legacy I can be happy with. Thank you. Thank you.